delicious, yummy. Cheers. Oh there my beautiful friends, welcome back to another video. I'm super grateful that you're here. And if you're new, what's up? My name's Julia and I'm here to help you with your intuitive eating and your intuitive living journey. In this video, we're going to be talking a lot about mindful eating, how that can help you, how you can recover or help yourself recover from an eating disorder and or just if you're struggling right now and have had an eating disorder in the past and you're just trying to navigate that trauma, how mindful eating can truly, truly help you in that. I know for myself, it is super, super helpful to just sit there and eat and only focus on the eating because it is a beautiful and spiritual experience. With all of that said, I do just wanna say that I lost a bunch of footage for this video. I have no idea where my SD card went and not all of the footage made it onto my hard drive, unfortunately. There may be a little bit of a moment of confusion. I may not have dinner one day or lunch another day and it's not that I didn't eat dinner or lunch on that day. I just lost the footage, unfortunately. So I'll talk a little bit more about that within the video so that way we're all up to date. And without further ado, let's get into it, my lovely friends. <laughs> Bless me. I would like to say a massive thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. I will tell you a little bit more about them in a hot second. For breakfast, I really was not craving breakfast food. I wanted a big old Buddha bowl with all of the good things like some ribbon carrots, some spinach, I threw some quinoa in here and some leftover rice as well. Sometimes you just gotta use what you have in the fridge and make a delicious bowl with it all. Chopped up some cucumber, some mini cucumber cause they're freaking cute as hell <laughs> and added some red cabbage sauerkraut. I made myself a dressing with some tahini, lemon juice, white balsamic vinegar, and also a green curry paste, cause why not, what the hell? I watered it down, gave it a good shake, and then drizzled it all over my bowl. Cracked some pepper on top as well, and then sat and enjoyed, mindfully. Ooh, and I added hemp seeds on top because hemp seeds are amazing and can be thrown on basically anything, savory, sweet, whatever the frick you wanna throw them in or on, they are there for you. <laughs> You may see some headphones coming out of my ears and guys, I am just listening to some jazz music. Sometimes when we're on a mindful eating journey, we need to start slow, give ourselves some sort of essence, but not distract ourselves completely. <laughs> A truly beautiful way to start your day is by giving your body something packed full of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, probiotics, all of these absolutely amazing and necessary things for our body. But at the same time, it's also super difficult. We're busy, we've got a lot on the go, we're traveling, etc. And to get all of those things in in a daily basis is sometimes really unrealistic. Luckily, AG1 by Athletic Greens is a simple yet delicious way to nourish our bodies and have a beautiful kickstart to the day. I've been using it for about 10 months and I'd like to attest that yes, you truly notice a difference when you are taking it. Sometimes we take a supplement and we don't really see the effects of it, but with 75 vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, superfoods, and just all around amazing things in one place, your body notices it, you notice it. And I think that's truly all what we want when we start taking ownership of our health. 
The digestive support of AG1 really helps me out in anxious and stressful times because I typically feel those emotions in my gut, which affects my poops, to be blunt. But it also helps when I'm just super busy and don't have enough time to properly fuel my body. I've personally also noticed a massive difference in my skin health. As somebody that has suffered with eczema for many, many years and has so many food triggers, it can be really difficult to navigate nourishing my body and what I can and cannot eat, especially when it comes to the health of my skin. So when I'm taking my Athletic Greens, I have that extra support that my flare-ups aren't gonna be as bad, and if any. I've had less flare-ups in the last 10 months than I've had probably in my entire life. So I'd like to say that AG1 helps you take ownership of your health and I highly, highly recommend it. If you wanna try them out, click the link down in my description box and or the one popping up on screen here to try them out. And when you do, you will get a one year supply of vitamin D3 K2 as well as five travel packs with your first purchase. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. Thank you AG1 for supporting my body on my adventures, my skin health, my digestive health in rough times and also supporting me on YouTube. I truly love you guys and let's get on with the video. This kombucha is just called black and blue. I got it because of the mystery, but now I wanna know what's actually in it. Green and black teas, cane sugar. Organic black currant juice, organic blueberry juice. Okay, black currant and blueberry juice. Thus, black and blue. All right, makes sense. There is a pear tree outside of Lucas's house that I've been staring at since the moment I walked in his bedroom and looked at it from the window. Of course, I had to go out, pick some pears, and make something delicious with them. I'm seasoning them with some vanilla extract, some cinnamon, some sugar, a touch of salt and giving them a good drizzle of some coconut oil as well, just to kind of add some fat to it and make sure they cooked really nicely when I put them in the oven. I'm oiling up a baking sheet, throwing the pears into the baking sheet and just kind of spreading them out as best as I possibly can. And of course, we are throwing a granola-esque type thing on top through some oats in my bowl, along with some crushed up coconut flakes, which honestly I might skip out on if you do this at home, just because they kind of burned. They weren't burnt, but they were a little more browned than I would have liked. Some sunflower seeds, some cashews, some more cinnamon, a touch of nutmeg. I would highly recommend doing some walnuts or some pecans in this. I unfortunately just didn't have any in the house, but they would be absolutely freaking delicious in that. I threw that into the oven, baked it for about 35, 45 minutes at 320 degrees. And then had the leftover granola with some more oats and then met up with my friend Joe. I just munched on some sweet potato fries and they didn't give me a plate for my ketchup, so I used a napkin. I honestly wasn't feeling the best emotionally on this day, so doing some baking, hanging out with a friend, and just having a cocktail with some sweet potato fries was the exact therapy that I needed. And the next day, I woke up feeling a lot more refreshed, starting it off with some AG1 and a coffee. After my morning drinks, which is such a ritual for me and something I highly recommend for all of you guys, just slowly make yourself something warm and cozy to drink and give yourself something nourishing like athletic greens or a green smoothie or a green juice or something of that nature just to start off the day right and kind of bring you into a good mindset mentally and physically. I then made myself some toast, some avo toast, and then ate myself one of these granola bars. I had never thrown it into the toaster before, but for some reason my body was just like, or my mind I should say, was just like, hell yes, you need to do this girl. So threw that into the toaster, added some peanut butter on top, and you can try those bars out. Use my code. I'll pop it up on screen and the link will be down in the description box. Oh, the peanut butter made it so dry. <laughs> oh no. There's gotta be some sort of solution to peanut butter like that. Like why is it always dry at the bottom of the jar? 
Like, we gotta solve this problem as a collective, because it's not a problem I want to live with. I just want my peanut butter to be perfect until the jar is done. Nothing beats homemade sauerkraut. There's not a sauerkraut in the world that I've tried. Not, well, I mean, not in the world. I haven't been all the way around the world, but I haven't tried a sauerkraut that's as good as homemade sauerkraut ever. guess what? It was so freaking good that I had to make myself another piece of toast. My friends, if something is delicious and you want more of it, then go and have some more of it. On this one, I did decide to add some anti-pesto spread on it as well, you know, spice things up. And I gave it a good old drizzle of balsamic vinaigrette dressing because I'm obsessed. We all know this. <laughs> we all know this. I then sat outside, soaked up the sun with my sunglasses on, which are such hot girl sunglasses and I'm so for them, and drank some kombucha with some coconut. I almost called it milk, water. I could literally just take a spoon to that sauerkraut jar and just eat the entire thing. bakery and it's right before they're about to close and I was like okay I'm gonna see if I luck out on some sourdough bread today because usually it just goes in four seconds and I was sitting in between okay sourdough or seedy bread and I looked at the girl I was like okay pick one or two she's like two we both laughed and I'm like all right sourdough it is she pulls it over to the counter and she's like you know what just have it I'm like what like, what she's like yeah it's just gonna get donated anyways, so here you go. And I'm like, thank you. I just made my freaking day. Aw. I have not done a grocery haul in such a freaking hot minute. Feel free to look at the timestamp down below and you can definitely skip over this. If you're in for the ride with me, then let's get into it. So I got some gluten-free pasta, some fajouli, spaghetti, big bag of quinoa, some sticky rice, three different types of nuts, some natural cashews, some almonds, and some pumpkin seeds because I've been really lacking on my nut game recently. Chickpeas, jar of tomato sauce. I highly recommend looking for tomato sauce that is just tomatoes and salt or tomatoes, water, and salt. And that's it. It's so easy to make your sauce your own with onions and garlic and spices. The pre-made stuff is full of additives and whatever, and as much as I am all for eating what your heart desires, everything in moderation, my friends. A big jar of green olives, because I haven't had olives in such a hot minute, and I saw it and was like, yes, please. Corn tortillas, acorn squash. I always wanna call this like apricot, apricot squash. I wanna like combine acorn and apricot. Acorn squash. <laughs> some kiwis, kimchi, red onion, regular onion, some more regular onion, Japanese yam, bok choy, big bag of brown mushrooms, big old egg, egg, <laughs> eggplant, big old eggplant, leeks, kale, green onion, butternut squash, broccoli, and I got a lot of these red shepherd peppers. They were such a good price. Apples, blackberries, raspberries, and some spinach. A lemon. Almost forgot about my lemon. All right, let's put everything away and make some dinner. But before we make dinner, we have to try my pear creation because we haven't freaking dug into it yet and it's been sitting there waiting for me, calling my name since the moment it came out of the oven. Grabbed a couple bowls, served me and some and lose some as well. And then I just sat, enjoyed that before we got into dinner. 
Some vanilla ice cream would have been so freaking good with this, but I couldn't find any vegan vanilla ice cream when I was at the grocery store. I should have washed this. I'll be back. For dinner, we are making a big old delicious bowl. As you saw, I did start off by rinsing some chickpeas and I actually got Lucas to make my chickpea, my crispy chickpea recipe from my recipe book. The link will be down in the description box for my recipe book. It is absolutely freaking delicious. And then I got to chop in all my veggies. We got some butternut squash, some Japanese yam. And as you can tell, I'm literally just rough chopping kind of everything. And we're really hoping for the best. I got my acorn squash and I de-seeded it with a spoon, chopped them in half, red onion, and some fresh ginger. Something I find so fun is not necessarily having a plan for a meal. You know what you want, you sort of know how it's going to turn out, but you get to play around with what you have in the house. You get to play around with the spices and the seasonings and just have fun with it. Getting in touch with your food is not always about reading a recipe and making sure that it comes out perfectly. And it's not that you don't want your meal to taste delicious, but the more comfortable you get with your ingredients, so I not only recommend intuitive eating, but I recommend intuitive cooking as well. Cook in silence or with some music that isn't distracting. And once we got our veggies into the oven, I got working on the rest of my bowl, which includes massaging some kale. I just took it off the stalks by using the knife at the edge of the stalk, chopped it up, threw it in my bowl, added some lemon juice, white balsamic vinegar, salt, and gave it a good massage with my hands until it looked like this. <laughs> I then chopped up some spinach, threw that in there as well, just for some more greens and to also use up the spinach that I had. For the sauce, we're making a creamy tahini dressing with tahini, white balsamic vinegar, lemon juice, Dijon mustard, nutritional yeast, some salt, some miso paste for the umami -ness cayenne, some cumin, a touch of nutmeg, and we watered it down. I added way too much water, by the way, and had to add more tahini to kind of level things out and make it a little bit more creamy versus like liquid. But guess what? It's all part of the learning experience. It's all part of the cooking experience. Not everything you do is going to be perfect and not everything that you cook is going to be your favorite meal. But that doesn't mean that it isn't delicious. It doesn't mean that you didn't put the intention behind it and it isn't good for your body and nourishing. And also good for your soul that you took the time to make something for yourself. You should have gratitude for yourself for fueling your body and when you get to sit and eat this meal that you put so much effort in, oh my gosh, do you not ever feel magical and amazing and <sighs> grateful and happy for yourself? Oh, I didn't do a pretty moment. Oh no. But also for all of the food and all of the hard work that it took to get the food to your table and on your plate. Cheers. I wish I cooked the vegetables a little bit less. I was hungry. <clears throat> that was delicioso. One thing that I've been doing for quite some time is mindfully making myself a morning drink. It brings me into the morning, into the day with a good, strong, lovely intention to just nourish myself and take care of myself and give myself delicious things. If you are a busy person or it's just unrealistic for you to eat every meal mindfully, that's okay. Do something once a day that's mindful. It doesn't have to be eating. It doesn't have to be making yourself a morning drink, but you can find something, something in your day to do mindfully and bring yourself into the moment and bring yourself happiness and joy and gratitude. A bread knife is probably the best purchase I've ever made. This little experiment that I did for myself this week by mindfully eating every single meal was 
amazing. I didn't just mindfully eat every single meal. I mindfully cooked every single meal as well. So no distractions, no phone, no nothing. Just me, myself, I, and the food, the ingredients. And yeah, I don't know. It, it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful in, in a weird way where I was bored sometimes and I was like, oh, like I just want to look at Instagram or I just want to look at talk TikTok or I just want to listen to a podcast. Like, why am I even doing this mindful thing? Like, does it really matter? No, like I can just listen to a podcast and like whatever. It's not distracting, but it is distracting. Everything that is around you is distracting you all of the time. So to just bring yourself into a moment and also fuel your body Bring yourself into a moment that is nourishing in so many different ways. It's not just nourishing because you are eating something after. It's nourishing for your mind to just have that anxiety relief. And I know for myself, like anxiety is something I struggle with. And it is something that I have dealt with for such a very long time. So to have tools like mindful eating and mindful cooking to help me and bring me into the day, bring me into my moment is such a useful thing for my mental health and my friends that boredom that you feel that's good for you it's good for you to not stimulate yourself all the time there's a difference between being bored and your life not being interesting trust me there is after that very delicious sandwich i realized that i didn't have my ag1 so i made myself and lou some ag1 and then decided to munch on some berries as well because yeah they're colorful and delicious and the sun was out and how could i not do a beautiful shot of them you know for dinner nothing fancy nothing technical nothing really special other than leftovers eat your freaking leftovers and you can still eat your leftovers with intention with love with mindfulness and soak up the fact that you got an easy meal. You did the work. You already did the work and now you get to reap the benefits. So <laughs> topped it off with some sesame seeds and some green onions and slowly enjoyed. On this morning, I was moving real slow and just doing my thing. And I noticed myself singing. I was humming and you know, this is so pretty. I love that. Oh, I should have added the maple syrup to my milk, not to my matcha. To make the milk broth better. See what else just like have weird silly voices that they bring out for like no reason. Sometimes I talk like a child. Sometimes I talk like a Russian. Sometimes I talk like Mexican. So I just, I don't know. I have these voices inside of me and in certain circumstances, they just come out of my mouth. And I'm like, why am I pretending to have this accent right now? It's all for fun, but. On this day, I'm 99.9% .9 sure I had oatmeal for breakfast. And this is lunch <laughs> so i'm making myself a pasta salad for lunch we chopped up some red onions some spinach and once our pasta was cooked i gave them a good old rinse threw the veggies in there along with some shredded carrot and some chopped up cucumber this is the most intense cucumber chop i've ever done in my whole life it was just go 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 done <laughs> threw it into my bowl gave everything a good mix and then threw in the leftover chickpeas, the toasted chickpeas from the other day. Dressed everything with some olive oil, balsamic vinaigrette dressing, some expensive stuff and some not so expensive stuff to kind of level it all out, you know. Black pepper and a few good pinches of chili flakes. I love making things a little bit spicy, having a little bit of tang to it. And then also add in a little bit of cheesiness with some nutritional yeast. I absolutely love pasta salad. I think it is just an all around delicious and fun thing to enjoy. Highly recommend. Mm. Mm. Simple, delicious, yummy. And for dinner on this evening, I had this rice and veggie dish that Lucas actually made up for us. Welcome back on top of a mountain with me. I want to talk a little bit more about mindful eating right now. Just a little one-on-one -on -one conversation with us and 
dive a little bit deeper into it because I truly think it can be so very useful for all of us, not even just people that have suffered with eating disorders or have an eating disorder currently. I just think it can be so very useful for every single person on the planet Earth because food is something we all have to consume. It's something that is a part of our daily lives and we're constantly distracting ourselves and taking ourselves out of a beautiful moment like eating a meal that we've just prepared. It can be really anxiety inducing and we have so many stressors and so many anxiety things that cause us anxiety in our life already that having one more moment of distraction is just too much for us. So sitting down, having a meal, and just enjoying that meal as a mindful, spiritual, intuitive, meditative moment can be so very useful for not only your digestive system, it can be helpful for your mental health. Your mental health and your physical health and your digestive system, all of that jazz is so interconnected. I know for myself when I have anxiety and I'm feeling sad, my hunger is basically out the window and my stomach just always feels like I have cramps. So when I can bring myself into the moment and just sit and eat that meal and not distract myself away from it, I can calm my nerves, bring myself back to reality instead of being a million other places. It's not always realistic. I think mindful eating can be just a tool that we can use when we are super anxious or we are struggling with food. I know sometimes for myself, all I wanna do is sit and watch a movie and eat dinner or sit and watch a YouTube video and you know munch and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that can also be a wonderful stress reliever. But with somebody that struggles with binge eating, for example, we're mind mindlessly eating at that point and we're not paying attention to our hunger cues. Mindful eating can really bring you into the moment of eating, make you pay attention to what you're eating and have more intention behind your meals. And I don't just mean having intention behind your meals of what is inside of your meal, but just having more intention with your meal. Like I want to sit and enjoy this and taste the food, feel the textures on my tongue and see if I actually even like the food as well. Because sometimes we just eat and eat and eat and not even realize like, oh, that's actually not even good. Like I don't even like that or whatever the case may be. And I also think that if you have say anorexia or orthorexia, that mindful eating can really bring you into the meal and realize that that meal that you are consuming is not doing anything to hurt you not doing anything to hurt you it's actually here to nourish you it's here to help you and heal you and make your body feel better make you feel better about yourself the meal in front of you is not doing anything other than just being it and you are subjectifying it to your anxieties and your pressures behind food and all of those things. The meal itself is not doing anything to hurt you. It is your own mind that is putting these pressures onto that meal. So when we mindfully eat, that can just bring us into the moment and bring us into that meal and bring us into ourselves and realize, hey, I am literally just sitting here fueling my body and that is a beautiful thing. And say you never have suffered with an eating disorder in your entire life, but you are an anxious person and you are struggling with depression or just feeling sad throughout the day and having highs and lows and you're just having a hard time managing your emotions. Sometimes just sitting and having a meal is the most amazing thing that you can do for yourself because it is a meditation within itself. If you don't have time to sit and meditate for 20 minutes, an hour every single day, I know I don't have the time to do that, but I know I'm going to eat. I know every single day I'm eating a meal, at least two meals a day. So if I know that I have that time, that 10, 20 minutes that it's going to take me to, to cook that meal and eat that meal, I can do that with intention. I don't have to distract myself. I don't have to take myself out of it or not pay attention to what I'm doing and just scroll on my phone and add even more stress and anxiety into my life. So mindful eating can really help us manage our anxiety um, because we're just being in that moment. And being is a beautiful, beautiful way to 
calm ourselves down and um, calm our nerves, nervous systems down. And in many cultures across the world, sitting and eating with your friends or your family is just something that people do all of the time. In the West, a lot of us live alone or we sit and watch TV with our friends or we sit and watch videos or scroll on our phones next to our friends and our family while we're eating and we're not paying attention to the other people, we're not paying attention to our meal, we're not paying attention to ourselves, we are just distracting ourselves more. I would really like to challenge you next time you go out to dinner with a friend or family member to just sit and eat with them. Don't pick up your phone, don't distract yourself, have a conversation with them, connect with them over a meal and it's a really wonderful experience. With all of that said, I truly think that mindful eating can be so very helpful for every single person no matter what and I strongly encourage you to give it a try. It doesn't have to be for an entire week but maybe just one meal a day or one meal a week. You sit and have it with intention and you can watch your mind shift and see how it helps you. So please let me know how your mindfulness eating journey is down in the comments. If you're gonna try it out, if you wanna try it out, or if you've done it before, please let me know. I'd love to hear it and I'd love to know how your experience went. I'm sending everyone so much love and I'm so grateful that you are here and joining me on my journey. If you could hit the like button and the subscribe button, it would truly, truly help me out. And I'll see you in the next one. Mwah!